<laughs> a woman sized like that uh, can only be a problem with a man. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't want to talk about it. Now I know it's a problem with a man. Uh, are you married to this man? No, you're not married to him. <laughs> you look too miserable, and there's no ring on your finger. <laughs> Now, uh, a married woman who's miserable, that's, uh, that's a different look entirely. <laughs> Believe me, I know that look. You don't have it. No, you, you have the look of a woman who, uh, I don't know exactly, but uh, it's definitely something to do with a man. I don't want to talk about it. Of course not. <laughs> Why would you want to talk about it? You talk about a problem, you might solve it. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, we won't talk about it. Let's, let's talk about today. It's a beautiful spring day. <laughs> when the little blue bird, who has never said a word, starts to sing, spring, spring. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm singing. Why, uh, you don't like singing? <laughs> what song are you singing? Uh, let's do it. Cole Porter's great lyrics. <clears throat> Please don't sing it. Why? You want maybe I should sing something with the hip-hop lyrics? <laughs> you know hip-hop lyrics. No. I was just making an idle conversation. You see, that's what you do when you talk about nothing. You, uh, you want to talk about something? No. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. What do you want to talk about? Baseball. I want to talk about Baseball. I, mean, I love baseball. <laughs> Getting to first base, second base, third base, and then hitting a home run. That's every player's dream. What are you talking about? Baseball. I mean, that's what you do in baseball. Well, of course, you could strike out. Nobody likes to do that. But everybody, including the best players, they, they do strike out. You know, Ty Cobb, now there was a great hitter. <laughs> Boy, I once saw a play about Ty, Ty Cobb. A, a great play. Uh, so much details about Ty Cobb's life than you can ever imagine. Uh, uh, enough <laughs> about baseball. All right, it was your topic. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you, uh, can I get you a cup of coffee? What? I, I asked you if you want a cup of coffee. That's what you do when you get to know somebody. You ask them if they want a cup of coffee. There's a little coffee shop right over there. I could get you a cup. Uh, uh, no, uh, I drink tea, herbal tea. Uh, it, uh, what does it look like? <laughs> what do you mean, was it, what does it look like? Well, I once saw a guy drinking something yellow once. It looked like urine. I, 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 I don't know what it was. I asked him, and he said it was herbal tea. Uh, the herbal tea you drink, uh, it, it isn't yellow, is it? Nope, it's a uh, peppermint tea. It looks like. Regular tea. Ah, peppermint tea. <laughs> you see how much I know about you already. <laughs> you don't drink coffee. You drink peppermint tea. I, I suppose that's a very popular tea. Yes. Uh, uh, do you take uh, milk and sugar? Just a little milk. <laughs> uh, we got a relationship going already. You know, uh, maybe tomorrow I'll, uh, I'll offer to buy you a donut. I'll find out your whole life story. <laughs> uh, can I get you that tea? Uh, no, I, I have to be getting back soon. <gasps> when the little blue clip in the middle of her work starts to croon to the moon up above. Please stop singing. <laughs> ah, it's great lyrics, and I just heard it on the radio today. Everybody knows the lyrics. Uh, that's why birds do it, bees do it, even educated fleas do it. But I'm God, he the doesn't to the even birds. know that I exist. Oh, you exist, believe me. I mean, you're here with me in the park. <laughs> yeah, well, he doesn't know it. Who doesn't know it? Philip Stanhope Duncan. Oh. Philip Stanhope Duncan. And uh, where is it that he doesn't know you exist? I mean, in the coffee shop, your apartment? Or? At work. I, I'm a corporate secretary at Myers Braddock and Stratton. Mm -hmm. Corporate secretary. <laughs> a very respectable occupation. Of course, I have absolutely no idea what a corporate secretary does, but I, I don't suppose it has anything to do with being a regular secretary. Uh, no. Uh, uh, well, maybe a little. Well, what does a, a corporate secretary do? Uh, signs corporate documents. I make sure that the 
companies are running the companies running smoothly and the shareholders get their checks that the company and directors do their jobs oh, are you a lawyer uh, no but I work with lawyers uh, is uh, Philip Stanhope Duncan a lawyer no he's an account executive huh. and you want him to know you exist yes <laughs> ask him if he wants a cup of coffee what uh, Ask him if he wants a cup of coffee. Uh, uh, does he have a desk or, or an office? Uh, a, a desk in a cubicle. Does he drink coffee? I, I don't know. I think so. Uh, ask him if he wants a cup of coffee. Tell him you're going to get some coffee and uh, ask him if he wants a cup. Look, I'm not a secretary. I don't just bring people coffee. Oh. So, <laughs> you want him to know you exist, but uh, you don't want to make a little sacrifice. And you call yourself a woman? Come on, make the sacrifice. Ask him if he wants coffee. <laughs> Look, I said I drink herbal tea. We'll pretend to like coffee. Real men don't drink herbal tea. At least not in public. Well, what if he says no? Well, then you ask him if he wants tea, but don't mention the herbal. What if he says no again? Well, then you can be sure that he knows you exist, but he doesn't want to know you. But if he says yes, well, then you can be sure that he wants to get to know you. You, you have a little coffee, you, you talk a little, you, you say something nice about his cubicle. Uh, he'll know you exist. <laughs> yeah, what? What is it now? I'm a compliance officer. I don't want him to think that I'm pressuring him to... To what? To have a cup of coffee? Uh, sexual harassment? Yeah, I know about this stuff. I read about it in the Times. Yeah, making people feel uncomfortable in the workplace. So you think that offering him a, a cup of coffee is uh, creating a hostile work environment? It could be viewed that way. C can a man open a door for a woman anymore? Well, if she doesn't object, if she does, then it could be considered harassment. So, wait, so if I want to be sure that I'm not guilty of sexual harassment, I have to memorize the name and face of every woman that doesn't want the door open for her. What is this world coming to? <laughs> well, well, I mean, you have to be very careful in the workplace, especially if you have some authority. All right, well, if he says no, then just don't ask him again. It's called the Adam's apple rule. What? <laughs> what you just said. Uh, you can offer him a bite of an apple. If he refuses, you don't offer again. No penalty. You have a rule for common sense? Why don't you just read Emily Post? <laughs> Nobody even knows who Emily Post is anymore. In my day, you know, if a man or a woman said yes, uh, uh, no, it, it was no. Uh, no questions asked. You just didn't ask again. You, you have to have rules when you forget common courtesy. Can I get you that herbal tea? Remember, I, I asked you if you wanted herbal tea. No, I really do need to be getting back to work soon. Uh, do you work near the park? Um, yeah, uh, that tall building right across the street. Count eight stories up and the corner window on the right. Ooh. It's my office. You have a corner office. <laughs> yeah, it's very impressive. Uh, do you work around here? Uh, no, I'm semi-retired. Uh, I own some local uh, rental properties. You know, I, I find good people. I charge them a fair rent, and they take care of my places. And leaves me lots of time to do other things. Like sitting on park benches? Well, you know, you meet some very interesting people in the park. I once met a security guard on the far side of the park, the most interesting man, a mo man I ever knew. A security guard. Now you see, now you're being judgmental. Uh, that's why I don't like to talk about work. You know, people tend to judge you by what you do, not by what you say. Uh, you know, I, I have some very uh, smart, uh, rich friends who have good jobs on paper. <laughs> uh, they can be very stupid, though. Some of them are senators. <laughs> OK, so uh, what made him so smart and interesting? 
Well, he didn't waste his time at work. Every night, uh, the executives would bring him their copies of the Wall Street Journal, Barron's, and other financial magazines. And uh, he didn't waste any time. He sat there and he analyzed them. He had nothing to do but sit in that security booth for six hours and analyze stocks. He retired early and he, he died a very rich man. Well, how do you know he was rich? Well, I fished on his yacht for 20 years. <laughs> we drifted for fluke from Sandy Hook to Seaside Heights. My name is Catherine. I'm sorry I didn't mention it earlier. Catherine, that's a beautiful name. <laughs> Catering. You see what my mind does? Every time I see you now, I'll think, Catering. Catherine. Donuts. Duncan? Philip Stanhope Duncan? Huh? <laughs> uh, you can call me Sam, short for Samuel. Is that your name or that's what you want me to call you? No, that's, that's my name. Well, hello, Sam. Hello, Catherine. So, Sam, uh, are you married? I, I don't mean to pry, I know we just met on a bench, but um, some of my colleagues and I were talking about relationships and I was wondering if you were married, if maybe I could get your input. Input? We used to call it advice, but okay. <laughs> uh, yes, married with children. Ask away, Catherine. Okay, so we were talking about um, love and hate and how they're opposite sides of the same emotion. But then some people were saying that the opposite of love was indifference. Oh, is this that uh, you have to hate someone before you can love them? Something like that. That's nonsense. Don't pay any attention to it. it. It's like the pause rule with the comma. There is no such rule. You only use it when no other rule ex uh, takes place. Uh, you know, and people that use the pause rule with the comma, they usually have very bad punctuation. And people who use the love-hate rule, they have lots of problems with their relationships. Are you an English teacher? Well, educated people should just know the rules of punctuation. <laughs> So it's like the pause rule? Yes. So, uh, how long have you been married, Sam? Forty years. Forty years? That's a long time. <laughs> how did you know that you could spend a lifetime with one person? Took a long ride in the car. What? It's true. Uh, we went to lunch at a lake about four hours away. Um, just the two of us. We drove up. Had lunch, drove back, took the whole day, had a wonderful time. That's how I knew. So the secret to a long and happy marriage, I'm assuming it's a happy marriage? Oh, very happy. Is to take a long ride in a car. It can't hurt. You know, when you're married, you, you spend a lot of time alone together. Spend six or seven hours in a car with someone, you'll know. Believe me, you'll know. <laughs> Well, I will have to tell my friends at work about that. <laughs> yeah, if uh, at the end of the trip you're not looking to escape, then you belong together. Joanne and I, we belonged together. Well, you know, uh, most of us, including myself, have had failed relationships. Guaranteed, none of us took long rides in cars. <laughs> so tell me, tell me about Philip Stanhope Duncan. Well, um... He's good looking, uh, he seems like a friendly guy, he's very likable, but um... But he hasn't asked someone if she wants a cup of coffee, huh? Something like that. <laughs> Don't make it complicated, you ask him. You really believe that'll work? There are no guarantees in life, but if you don't change the situation, the situation will never change. How do you know it will work? It's the simple things. Okay, I'll remember that. Oh, Sam, did you just see that? It just ran right across the road. Uh, it's a red fox. Oh, God, it was beautiful. That explains the absence of feral cats from the area. There used to be a lot more of them. Uh, they eat cats? Oh, yeah, sure. Small ones and squirrels, chipmunks. And basically, if it can be hunted, <laughs> they'll eat it. I don't think I've ever seen a fox outside of a zoo. Yeah, it came out from the rock garden there. That's where the cats live. Probably heading back to the ravine. 
I never expected to see a fox here and a red one. Oh, I saw a coyote once in the park. Yeah, it came up from the ravine, too. Foxes and coyotes in the park. Oh, yeah. New Jersey has uh, lots of animals in the parks. Foxes, uh, uh, coyotes, raccoons, uh, possums, squirrels, chipmunks, geese. Uh, all you have to do is look. And a lot of different trees. Yeah. You got white oak and sycamore. Over, over there is a tulip tree, and next to it is a catalpa. Hmm. Of course, then down by the tennis courts, you got white oak and pin oak. Huh. Where did you learn the names of all those trees? Uh, they used to have little brass plaques on their trees with their names on it. Well, what happened? Yeah, the teachers complained. Apparently, leaf collecting was a little too easy, so uh, they wound up removing all the plaques, but not before I remembered <laughs> and memorized the names. <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> and look at those beautiful flowers. Mm. Yeah, you got azaleas there, rhododendrons, uh, and the, the yellow ones next to it is coropsis. And those purple and yellow ones, those are irises. Hmm. And plants too, huh? Yeah. Thoreau knew Walden Pond and Concord Mass. I know the plants and the animals in this park. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I read Walden in high school. I, I thought the book was boring. Well, you should try him again. You'll be surprised how much better he's gotten with age. And what, what high school student, student reads Thoreau? I mean, I know college graduates who've never met him. Oh, uh, I, it was an all-girls Catholic school, St. Mary of all the Virgins. That was the name? <laughs> That's what the boys called it. Uh, it was taught by nuns. Uh, it was really strict, but I got a good education. I won two full scholarships. Well, you must be very smart. There were no boys. I spent <laughs> a lot of time studying. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> At Vermont University, I, I met Brian. That's, uh, I made up for a lot of lost time with boys. <laughs> Uh, that's the uh, failed relationship. Mm. Hmm? I, I listen. Well, no wonder you've been married for 40 years. <laughs> uh, like patience, it's a virtue. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell me uh, about Brian. Well, um, he left me after graduation. <laughs> he, he went to law school and then got a job at his father's law firm. And I came to New Jersey and went to Rutgers and got my master's, then got a job at Myers, Braddock, and Stratton. His family had already chosen the girl he was supposed to marry. I didn't fit into their plans. I was more into dresses than dressage. Oh, the horsey sex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, his family owned, bred, and raced horses. I wouldn't even get on one. <laughs> That's just as well. They would never have accepted you. <laughs> don't think I don't know that. <laughs> I felt vindicated, though, when I heard that Brian took his wife and two children and moved to Kansas. He found God. Oh, well, I'm sure God is very happy. <laughs> he couldn't find him on the East Coast? Not amongst the horsey set. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, oh, God. I could never imagine living in Kansas. Oh, well, what's wrong with Kansas? Uh, uh, Towns where everybody knows your name, middle of the country. Uh, uh, tornadoes. Oh, well, the Kansans think that uh, hurricanes are much worse. Really? Uh, why? I mean, at least you know when a hurricane's coming. You know, uh, with a tornado, maybe it takes out a block, maybe two, occasionally a small town. Nothing like the destruction of Hurricane Sandy. That wiped out communities in three different states. Yeah, well, I still wouldn't want to live in Kansas. <laughs> well, they're very nice people. Well, you've been there? Oh, yes. <laughs> I've seen the great ball of twine. <laughs> you just made that up. No, I'm serious. It's the great ball of twine. It's the largest ball of twine in the world. It must be 10 feet high, and, and, and eight adults with their arms outstretched can't get their arms around it. It's the biggest ball of twine in the world. You can't miss it. A great ball of twine. Yes, it, it sits under an iron corrugated cover uh, in the middle of Main Street in Lebanon, Kansas. You can't miss it. Who'd want to? Exactly. And then you never again have to worry about, you know, those people that uh, talk about the Eiffel Tower in Paris or the, or the pyramids of Egypt. You just sit back and you wait for a little lull in the conversation. You say, I have seen the great ball of twine. <laughs> it leaves them speechless. I bet it does. <laughs> well, now I have a reason to go to Kansas. <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> uh, you know, it's better to laugh at the world. Yeah. 
Much better to laugh than cry. Do you ever watch uh, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart? Occasionally. Uh, I turn him off when he tries too hard. No, me too. You know, sometimes he's just too liberal for me. Ah, well, what do you expect? He's broadcasting from New York City. <laughs> New York liberals are the worst, I tell you. I, I mean, they think they know all the answers. You know, it's too bad they didn't spend a little more time studying the questions. <laughs> uh, but I think John Stewart has his moments. Sam. Samuel, that's uh, a biblical name. Are you Jewish? Not that there's anything the matter with that. <laughs> that's Seinfeld. <laughs> no, no, I'm not Jewish. But I did grow up in a Jewish neighborhood. Uh, great people, wonderful food. And the schools in the Jewish neighborhood, they were the best public schools around. Of course, nowadays all the Jewish kids go to Hebrew academies. Yeah, always go to Jewish doctors and lawyers. That's what my mother used to say. <laughs> I once talked to a Jewish doctor. He said to me, never talk about sickness. He said, people that talk about sickness, eh, they got a lot of sickness to talk about. Maybe they should talk about good health. <laughs> you know, you learn to take advice and to give it when you grow up in a Jewish neighborhood. Like uh, asking Philip Stanhope Duncan if he likes coffee? Couldn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, you want to change the future, you got to change the present. Well, I hope it's as simple as you say. Mm -hmm. There are no guarantees in life. Uh, but next time we meet, you'll have to tell me all about it. Uh, you're locked in here now. Huh? I remember what I said. Whenever I see you, cater in. Catherine. Donuts. Duncan. P.S. Philip Stanhope. <laughs> Does your mind work like that with everything? <laughs> I couldn't tell you what I had for breakfast this morning, but when I meet somebody, I remember their name. It's a blessing and a curse. That's from Monk, Tony Shalhoub. I, what a great actor. Did you see him in Men in Black? Uh, no. Oh, it was brilliant. Very versatile. Very talented. Well, just out of curiosity's sake, uh, what other movies do you like? Three Amigos. <laughs> <laughs> that My Little Buttercup scene is a classic. It was Martin Short, uh, uh, Steve Martin, and uh, Chevy Chase. Uh, they were brilliant together. Okay, anything else? Uh, let's see. Yes, Tremors. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Great worms under the town of perfection. <laughs> I loved Reba McIntyre in that movie. It made me a fan of hers. <laughs> okay, so Men in Black, Three Amigos, Tremors. And uh, Evolution, David Duchovny, a great movie, very funny. Uh, creatures Arrive on a Meteor, it's a very funny movie. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would say, you know, Casablanca or The African Queen or Citizen Kane, maybe. They're birds in the trees movies, everybody sees them, and they should, but there are others. I mean, like Chaplin's The Dictator. Or even Jerry Lewis movies. You, you listen to the dialogue at the end of The Errand Boy when they're talking about people and things that make us laugh. It's just brilliant. And, hey, let's not forget about the Busby Berkeley movies of the 1930s. <laughs> Great movies. Yeah, no, not everything has to be serious to be good, but it helps. So it's not just Cole Porter. You can you uh you have dimensions, I Sam. I am immense. I contain multitudes. Ah, Walt Whitman. Oh, that's your liberal arts education. <laughs> uh, did you ever read Edward Albee's uh, The Zoo Story? Uh, no. I read The Sandbox in college, and I went and saw Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. And uh, Zoo Story. That's where that love hate thing is. Uh, but believe me, doesn't apply to you. <laughs> Well, I, I have to get going, Sam. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, well, <laughs> it was nice meeting you too, Catherine. And don't forget, coffee. <laughs> I get no kick from champagne. Near alcohol doesn't thrill me at all. So tell me why should it be true that I get a kick out of you.
imagine my surprise when I saw it was you. I, I never thought I would see you again. Uh, well, I was out uh, visiting my children in Ohio. One month at one son, one month at the other sons. <laughs> they really want us to move out there, but it, it makes sense when you're with the grandchildren. Well, how many grandchildren? Five, uh, all ages, from uh, nine to six months. Huh. Oh, they all live in Ohio? No, my daughter lives in Florida. Her husband works for Din Disney. They have the nine-year-old, and we usually visit them in the winter. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Ohio and Florida, nobody wanted to settle in New Jersey? It's such a nice state. Well, my boys went to college in Ohio. One went to Ohio State, the other to uh, Bowling Green University, and they met some nice Ohio girls and they got married and settled down. And my daughter, Mary Ann, she went to college at the University of Miami. That's where she met her husband. I find if they, uh, if they go away to college and out of state, that's where they're going to settle down. <laughs> well, I, I went to Rutgers. My whole family's in Connecticut. Oh, well, enough said. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you have a nice family, Sam. Uh, I just wish they lived a little closer. You know, the older I get, the more I enjoy being with the grandchildren. Yeah. But uh, um, we, uh, we settle here. My wife would move in a heartbeat if we could find a place. Oh, and you? Well, you know, my boys work for major corporations. Uh, I mean, suppose we moved uh, to be closer to them, and, and then they had to move. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't build your life around your kids. They have a life of their own. Mm. So we stay here. I just wish a few more of my friends were still around. And what happened? They moved closer to their grandchildren. Now they're spread out all over the United States. <laughs> but uh, we do uh, have our friends. Uh, my wife's got her coffee clutch friends. In fact, she's back at the house with them now. And I have a few golf buddies. <laughs> so uh, what were you looking at with binoculars? Ah, large holes in dead trees down by the pond. Yeah. I thought I heard a pileated woodpecker this morning. A what kind of woodpecker? Pileated. Uh, think of a, a woodpecker on steroids. I mean, they grow to be uh, larger than a crow. The wingspan, it's got to be at least 30 inches. I have this big head and a long tail. And the sound that they make hammering on a, on a dead tree, it's like a jackhammer. <laughs> Did you find any big holes? No. But somewhere around here, there's a really big woodpecker, <laughs> just not in this park. Uh, the sound that they make, it, it travels for a long way. You know, I was uh, surprised when you remembered my name. I told you. Cater in, Catherine, right here. <laughs> yeah, once you're locked in, I told you, you stay there for a very long time. Oh, that's what you said. Uh, so tell me, Catherine, did uh, Philip want coffee or tea? Coffee, of course. Mm -hmm. And you, the herbal tea drinker, you pretended to like coffee. Yes, I did. <laughs> but uh, now that we're seeing each other regularly, I've switched back to herbal tea. He doesn't seem to mind. Mm, seeing each other regularly, huh? So you like him. <laughs> he's a really nice guy. and He's funny and he's personable. And God, he pays for everything when we go out. They still do that? Well, no, he's a keeper. <laughs> Believe me, a man who's tight with a dollar when he's dating is tight with a dollar when he's married. Well, nobody's talking marriage yet. Uh, well, for future reference. But notice you did say yet. <laughs> uh, I listen. <laughs> uh, actually, Sam, uh, Philip asked me to go to a wedding with him. Uh, one of his college friends is getting married, and uh, some of his friends want to meet up at the church and then go to lunch afterwards. So what's the problem? I'm not so sure that I should go. Why not? His friends are flaming liberals, his words. Is Philip a liberal? Ever meet an accountant who was? So don't worry about it. Go with him. He said his old girlfriend might be there. Well, then you definitely go. I saw a photo of her in his college yearbook. Blonde hair, blue eyes, a dance major, the kind of girl who knows what she wants and will get it. What did Philip say about her? Not much. I mean, he said he was serious about her, like marriage serious. But um, she wanted more out of life, and she went to Vegas to find it. And uh, he came here to New Jersey. He says he was happy he came here now. So don't worry, go with him. 
don't know. I, I don't want to embarrass him. You know, I, I have no patience for liberals anymore. I mean, they always want to know your opinion, and then if you don't have one, they want to know why. What if they ask me my opinion on gay marriage? Is it a gay wedding? No. I'm sure Philip would have said something. Uh, believe me, he would have said something. I mean, I don't have an opinion on it one way or another. Well, so that's what you say. I have a homosexual friend. Who doesn't? I mean, she's a lesbian. I, I like her, well, but... You know, uh, suppose your lesbian friend uh, found your kissing Philip to be disgusting. I, I, I assume you and Philip are kissing. <laughs> yes, so, but uh, she well, would... Now, suppose that she... Uh, she found your heterosexual relationship uh, revolting. W would you care? Of course not. I mean, suppose our entire society was filled with red high-heeled boots and sequins and drag queens and... <laughs> That's uh, actually a quote from a review I read in the paper. <laughs> Very clever. Uh, but seriously, I mean, would you need societal approval to make you feel better about your relationship with Philip? No, you but... You see, that's because you're not conflicted. Conflicted people, they're always looking outward. They, they need all kinds of a approval. Look, you can never satisfy them, so don't even try. Yeah, but they're his friends. Well, so are you, and I suspect, given the choice between you and him, I think I know who he'd pick. Uh, of course, it would be different if you were teenagers. Teenagers, if the girl doesn't fit in, uh, it's a problem. But I don't think Philip Stanhope Duncan is that shallow, do you? No. <laughs> nah, you, you go with him. Be your best and your brightest. He'll appreciate the effort. I, I don't like being pressured into saying things that I don't believe, but I don't want to be rude. Then just disagree without being disagreeable. Well, what would you say if I asked you about gay marriage? <sighs> well, I, uh, I know the difference between a pigeon and a seagull. Uh, a pigeon is not a seagull, and uh, it has wings, it flies, but it's not a seagull. It may be white, like a seagull. I mean, it could be an albino pigeon, huh? <laughs> but uh, it's never going to be a seagull. And every right-thinking pigeon and seagull know that. And even if the enlightened of the world say otherwise, it's never going to be a seagull. I know the difference between a pigeon and a seagull. That's what I'd say. OK. Uh, what would you say if I asked you about immigration? My house has walls, and that's a good thing. I mean, it keeps people out, you know, and, unless I want them to come in and I invite them. Uh, nobody can force their way into my home. Uh, and if they do, I have the right to remove them. Well, a country is like a home. That's what I'd say. Gun control? <laughs> you know, there are lots of weapons in my house that can kill people. No, I'm serious. No, they got, I got hammers, I got knives, screwdrivers, pots and pans. Cast iron ones are particularly lethal. Uh, and my wife, she's got access to all of these weapons. I married a smart woman and I treat her good. I don't want to worry about getting hit up beside the head with a cast iron <laughs> skillet in the middle of the night. <laughs> you know, uh, our country can get along with guns just as easily as I can get along with pots and pans. Uh, Provided our politicians treat our citizens the way I treat my wife. They don't. And that's why they want to take away our guns. That's what I'd say. <laughs> well, maybe I will go with Philip. Six hours in a car is a long time. You don't want to kill each other at the end. You belong together, right? <laughs> <laughs> Women listen, too. <laughs> God, why is it when I'm sitting here, the world seems so simple? You know what I mean? Birds, trees, fresh air. Even the advice I get seems to make more sense to me. Yeah, that's uh, because of my mother. <laughs> no, no, not so fast. She's a very smart woman. Maybe not in book learning, but uh, in ways of the world. <laughs> so you took advice from your mother? Oh, I always wanted to hear what she had to say. She usually had better advice than my friends. Well, that's not too hard to understand. <laughs> you know, all of us at work, we've 
Oh, we all have failed relationships. We're all the products of breakups and divorces. Yet we sit around in the break room giving each other relationship advice. Hmm. So tell me, uh, Catherine, uh, you, uh, you brought Philip some coffee. And uh, when did the magic happen? Uh, well, um, I, I was bringing him coffee every day for two weeks. and. And we started talking about a whole lot of things. Um, we both like the Yankees and the Giants. Well, that's one less thing to worry about in a relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a great Dave Brubeck fan. D who isn't? <laughs> he, uh, he was surprised when I recognized Take 5 as his ringtone. He laughed when he heard mine, uh, Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Oh. oh, well, my ringtone is ring, ring, ring. <laughs> I like to keep things simple. <laughs> so, uh, how do you feel about jazz? I wish it had better lyrics. Now, that is funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, he laughed too. He said that if I can live with Brubeck, then he can live with the Bee Gees. And how does he feel about disco? He likes it. Well, who doesn't? Now, uh, did you tell him about Brian? Well, everything I told you. He said that he would never make me move to Kansas. <laughs> and uh, that's when he told me about Clarice. He said he was over her, and I believe him. It wasn't until um, actually the end of the month when we have our quarterly meeting that I realized how much he liked me. Um, I, we have this big meeting. I mean, there's lots of things to discuss. And um, we ordered in lunch, and I worked late, and I never had a chance to call him or bring him his coffee. So uh, Philip went to my office to see if I was sick. Or to see if you were maybe buying coffee for someone else. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, something yeah. like that. The next day, he took me to lunch. Yeah, he missed you. He was a little worried that maybe somebody else was making a move, so he made his move. Uh, I'm beginning to like him. So am I. <laughs> God, it really is beautiful here. Uh, and quiet, too. Like, can you name me one other place where, except for a church, hmm. where you can find the peace to be alone with your thoughts? <laughs> not in the cafeteria of Myers, Breidig, and Strand. No, and not in any coffee shop, especially the one over there. There's so much noise. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to get away. You mean like that uh, day we first met? <laughs> Yeah, I, I fled to the park that day. I needed to clear my head. So you sat down next to me? Well, I mean, I wanted to be alone, but not by myself. I mean, you were on one side of the bench, I was on the other, and then you started singing Cole Porter. Oh, you wish maybe I would have sang the Bee Gees? Feet <laughs> for city breaking and everybody shaking you, staying alive, staying alive. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm frightening myself. <laughs> oh, Sam, you can make me laugh. <laughs> but uh, stick with Cole Porter. <laughs> yeah, I, I really should be getting back to work. Hey, uh, did I ever tell you the story about the tire farmer who made a fortune just doing nothing? <laughs> no, but uh, I guess I have to hear this. Yeah. Well, th this guy inherited 500 acres of worthless farmland. Uh, really never farmed anything on it. And then one day, a man came along and offered him $500 if he'd let him paint a picture on the side of the barn that faced the highway. Uh, uh, one of those tobacco ads? We used to drive south when I was a kid, and there would be tobacco ads painted all along the sides yeah. of barns. Uh, they had them in central Pennsylvania, too. So anyway, he did, and he took the $500, and he paid his taxes with it. So basically, the guy was living for free. So what's this got to do with tires? <laughs> well, then one day he's sitting on the porch and uh, a guy drives up in an old truck that's loaded with uh, old tires. And he says to the farmer, look, if you'll let me dump my tires on your property, I'll give you 25 cents a tire. Oh, the old man says, all right, put them in the back of the property. And he took the 25 cents per tire. And he did that for 20 years. You see, what happened is landmarks, I mean landfills, they, uh, they won't take tires. They pop up uh, out of the ground, out of the dirt. So when word got out that the farmer would take old tires, every tire shop and garage for 20 miles around were bringing and dumping their tires on his property. He sat back for 20 years just collecting quarters. 
pretty soon he had a mountain of tires, I mean, 400 acres worth of old tires. And then a scientist discovered that you can use old tires as fuel in a furnace. Well, who do you think had the largest supply of old tires? The tire farmer. And now they were coming with empty trucks, loading them up, and paying him by the truckload to remove the tires. <laughs> he made a fortune. Wow, <laughs> that has to be a made up story. Oh, no, 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 it gets better. Yeah. When he has the tires removed, uh -huh. he's now sitting on 500 acres of undeveloped land in an area where everything was on, uh, had been developed. Uh -huh. And so now a developer paid him millions of dollars for his farm. I'm telling you, I'm not smart enough to make that up. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, you know, I had heard of uh, the story of the guy who invented the pet rock. Uh -huh. I mean, I know he made millions on that. <laughs> A man should never work by the sweat of his brow unless he sweats easier than I do. Ah, Thoreau. Oh, very good. <laughs> um, you know, Sam, uh, I'm really glad I got the chance to see you today. Uh, I didn't think I'd be able to see you again, but uh, I wanted to tell you that you changed my life. No, no, no. You changed your life. I, I just gave you some advice, that's all. Yeah, well, the advice you gave changed my life. Yeah, I'm glad I could be of help. <laughs> I had my doubts, but it was a remarkable suggestion. Did you used to give your kids advice when they were growing up? You think kids listen to their parents? Oh, they listen. Trust me, especially daughters. They might not admit it, but they do. <laughs> the older I get, the wiser my father seems to become. Yeah, that's one of the benefits of getting older. <laughs> Did you uh, give your children advice? I'm telling you, they didn't like kids, didn't listen. Oh. <laughs> so, um, you think I should go to the wedding? Look, don't let Clarice have a clear shot at him. He asked you to go, you go. Did you have a Clarice in your background? Oh. Every man has a Clarice. For me, well, it was Rosemary Myers. Dark hair, flashing dark eyes. She was beautiful. I loved her. Every time she broke up with a boyfriend, she'd call me and <laughs> I'd be there waiting for her. So what happened? Well, one day, Rosemary called me up and asked me for a cup of coffee. She wanted to discuss an assignment. Uh, and so I went. That was in our junior year of college and we got married right after graduation. Uh-huh. Oh, well, Joanne, yeah, so you, uh, coffee was your wife's idea. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, no smart man marries a stupid woman. <laughs> and uh, if he's really smart, he learns to take her advice. <laughs> so whatever happened to Rosemary Myers? Well, she called uh, one weekend, broke up with yet another boyfriend, and uh, I had plans that weekend for a date with uh, Joanne. I said to myself, now, who loves you better and who's best for you? And the answer to both questions was Joanne. So, whatever happened to Rosemary Meyer? I have no idea. You never thought about her? No. How is that possible? You know, my friends and I, we, we've been sitting around and uh, talking and asking, how is it that you know he or she is the one? I mean, aside from taking long rides and cars. <laughs> you know, I mean, is it just love or do you just have to trust your instincts? Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. You didn't uh, choose your college by emotion. You didn't get your job by instinct, did you? Love is different, Sam. Yes, exactly. Different as in it's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. You can't trust that to emotion alone. You, you got to step back from the emotion. Let logic and objectivity enter in. I mean, you have to know that this person is the right person for all the right reasons. Uh, you know, you're going to revisit this decision a, a thousand times in your life. If you have doubts, they'll resurface later. But if you have clarity, well, then you'll look back on the day you made that decision and you'll never second guess yourself. Well, what if you don't have that clarity? You know, I'm just asking as a hypothetical question. Well, then you let family and friends, good friends, 
They, they'll take care of the logic and objectivity. And they always know who's bad for you. <laughs> you know, my father warned me about Brian. Mm. You know, if, if Philip asked me to marry him, I'd, I'd accept for all the right reasons. Are you sure of that? I'm old enough to understand that I found someone who's good for me. Well, if you're good for him, he'll know it. I'm good for him. You know, I've invited him to my grandmother's 75th birthday party. The whole family will be there. Well, taking him home to meet the family, huh? I haven't brought a man home with me in three years. Does Philip know that? He said maybe it's time that I did. <laughs> well, maybe it is time. You know, we've only been dating for five months, but I feel like I've known him for years. Look, you let him take you to the wedding in Philadelphia, you take him to your grandmother's birthday party, and you take an objective look at how you both act. If it's love, those events will prove it. <laughs> Sam, I, I have to get back to work, but um, it has been a pleasure. Uh, you always give me so much to think about. Uh, remember, Catherine, the, the decisions we make in life determine our happiness. I'll remember that. <laughs> For you and I have a guardian angel on high with nothing to do but to give to you and to give to me love forever true Night and day, you are the one Only you beneath the moon And under the sun Whether near to me or far It's no matter Tell me that's a Cole Porter song. Yeah, night and day, yes. <laughs> Thank God. Is your name Sam? Yes, but I don't think we know oh, each other. For the other. past six weeks, I've been stopping every older gentleman to walk past this bench, humming, whistling, singing, anything resembling a song. I'm Philip Duncan. Oh, Catherine's Philip. Yes, it's nice to meet you. How is Catherine? She's gone. Catherine's gone. Gone? Gone? What do you mean, gone? She took a leave of absence from work and left. She never said a word to me or anyone as to where she was going. That doesn't sound like her. Did you have a fight or a breakup? No, nothing. I, I thought everything was perfect. We, we spoke the night before. She told me she loved me. Next morning we go to work and I find out she's not there. I, I call her apartment, no answer. She's off Facebook and Twitter and that was six weeks ago. Sam, I thought you might know something. The, the last time I spoke to her, she told me she'd marry you if you asked her. I was going to ask her. Look, here's the ring. Huh? Wow, that's a very beautiful ring. I was, uh, was going to ask her on Thanksgiving. It's her family's big holiday and we were going to Connecticut. I'm very sorry to hear this. You have no idea where she went? Nobody does, Sam. I spoke directly to the chairman of the board. He has no idea. She, she came up to him and asked for a leave of absence to tend to a personal matter. She had accumulated a bunch of sick days and had a bundle of comp time coming up, so the board gave her six months paid sabbatical, but she never said a word as to where she was going. Nobody just disappears. Somebody knows something. Not anyone I can find. Everyone at work thinks I'm keeping a secret from them, and you're really my last hope. I haven't been here for months. I was visiting my daughter in Florida. It makes no sense, Sam. We just gotten back from Ohio, where she met my family. My, my uncle John was being honored as Rotary Man of the Year. He, 
he helped raise me after my father was killed in Iraq, and, and everyone was there. My mother, my uncles, my cousins, and they all loved her. It, it was a wonderful day. And you didn't do anything? No, I'm a good judge of character. No, you didn't do anything to hurt her. But do you think maybe Clarice... She told you about Clarice? Uh, no, at, at my cousin's wedding in Philadelphia, she, she, she showed me a lot of attention. She told me how much I'd grown. It, it's all true, but, but that thing's to Catherine. I was flattered, but I didn't want to get back together with her. Did Catherine know that? Of course she did, Sam. I, I didn't want her to feel threatened or, or insecure, and Clarice was gorgeous that day. <laughs> Dressed for the hunt, huh? Yeah, you bet she was, Sam. She kept trying to get me to go over to the bar so she could have me all to herself. You didn't go, did you? No, 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 of course not. Catherine mm. was sitting right next to me and talking with my friends. I wasn't going to desert her. Mm. These your uh, liberal friends? Oh, God, not really friends. We played lacrosse together in college. We didn't share l political views. Oh, Catherine was the first person they couldn't bully into agreeing with them. And they tried everything, Sam. They just, she just kept saying the entire time, you could be right, but I don't think so. <laughs> If pressed for additional comment, she would say, it's too nice of a day to talk about such things. <laughs> and she would smile and hold me in close. Completely baffled them, Sam. She was wonderful. Did Catherine and Clarice talk? No, Sam. I was with Catherine the entire time. Oh, a week later, Clarice called and asked if I was planning on getting engaged to that woman. Ooh, well, that's a big question. Mm -hmm. What did you say? I told her I was working on it. She hasn't called back since. Good answer. Uh, did Catherine know? No, no, she didn't need to know that. All she needed to know was that Clarice wasn't in the picture anymore. And she knew that. How did it go at her grandmother's 75th birthday party? She told you about that? It, well, just that she was going to ask you to go. I mean, did anything happen there? She has such a large family, so many uncles and, and cousins, and, and they're all wonderful. They, they made me feel like I was part of the family. Well, that's a good sign. That's why I asked her to come to Ohio with me. I, I wanted her to meet my family. On the drive back home, I decided I wanted to marry her. We're not kids anymore, Sam. We know what we know, and we know who's good for us. She's good for me. She told me that you were good for her. That's what I thought, too, which is why I don't understand all this. An affair to remember. Deborah Carr and Cary Grant. Now, she's been in a car accident, see, and he's up on top of the Empire Sam, State Building waiting for her. This isn't a movie, Sam. Whatever she did, she did on purpose. She, she took a leave from work. She, she stopped her phone calls and left without saying a word. Uh, look, we know she's not a foolish woman. But to leave without saying a word, Sam? What am I supposed to think? What am I supposed to do? We have faith. You love her, don't you? That's what love is. It's believing and forgiving, if necessary, but never giving up, having faith in what the one you love. What about her losing faith in me, Sam? She didn't lose faith in you when Miss Blonde Hair and Dreamy Blue Eyes was hanging around, No, did she? she didn't, and I didn't disappoint her. Well, what makes you think she's going to disappoint she you? She made a decision to leave, no, Sam! No, no, look, she took an action. Uh, she didn't make a decision. There's a difference. Not to me. Well, look, you took an action. You decided to talk to your old girlfriend. Nobody forced you to. You decided to take an action and you talked to Clarice. But you made a decision to marry Catherine. Now, look, you don't know if Catherine took uh, any decision. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she took an action, but you don't know if she made a decision. And I don't think you should do anything until you find out what that decision is and have faith that she'll make the right decision. That's a good point, Sam. A lot of my friends told me I should just dump her. Yeah. Young people today, first sign of trouble and they run. And, and then they want to know why they can't find happiness. Now, in bad times, that's when we prove our worth to one another. Huh. Is that how you stayed happily married for 40 years? You want a happy marriage, you prove yourself worthy in times of adversity. Uh, and, and never lose faith in the love of the woman that you love. Sam, 
You're a park bench philosopher. All my friends tell me I should get on with my life, and you say I have to have faith? No, I'm telling you to listen to your heart. I mean, you, look, all those people out there, I mean, they all have opinions about what other people should do. Does the President of the United States ask them what he should do? Well, if he doesn't do it, why should you? I'm telling you, you know right here what's right for you. Have faith in what you believe. If only I had some measure of hope. Yes, I love her, but... Look, you see those clouds up there? Now, in those clouds are raindrops that can be measured by radar. Now, you can't see them, and you can't feel them. But you have faith that there's raindrops in there because you know it can be measured. You can't feel it. You can't see it. What's your point, Sam? Look, we, we measure love by the, the, the cathedrals that it builds, by, by the long and, and happy marriages that it makes. Y you have to have faith that it will come true. I mean, one day, yeah, they'll make a love machine. Uh, uh, who knows? Maybe they'll call it Beyonce or Jay-Z. I don't know. <laughs> she was right. You're funny. Ugh, I come this close to quitting my job and leaving the area. I had another job lined up, but I decided not to take it. Mm. Not just yet. It's because you love her. Yes, Sam! I do love her, but I'm just stunned. It's like I'm walking around in a bad dream. I, I, I go to work. I take calls from clients. I, I submit my reports and answer emails. I don't know what to do. There was a time where I could go to a sports bar after work and drink beer and eat wings with friends, but I just don't want to do that. Look, you, you see those two birds over there, uh, all alone. Yeah, Canadian geese, rats with wings. It's yeah. one of the kinder names. I want you to know, they mate for life. They don't need a crowd of noisy honkers around them. Uh, maybe someday, you know have some goslings, and then they'll join the pack for protection. It takes a village to raise a child. No, no. A goose is a goose. It takes a loving mother and father to raise a child. What's your point, Sam? Yeah, look, look, look at that couple coming towards us, huh? The ones with the earphones on, both of them, huh? See yeah, them? Probably listening to their own motivational music. A beautiful day, butterflies in the bush, clouds in the sky, and did they see any of it? No, they, they marched straight ahead, their eyes forward, their head full of noise. Why even bother to walk in the park? Less chance of getting hit by a car. You know, they can't stand to be alone with their thoughts, or with each other. <laughs> they're walking together, but believe me, they're miles apart. So I'm separated from Catherine by who knows how many miles, but all my thoughts are with her. What makes you think it's any different with her? <laughs> Sam, you're amazing. Uh, my situation has gotten no better, but I feel a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I'm a good judge of character. Catherine was right about you. Uh, she's not a capricious woman. Something Something made her leave. Somebody in her family knows her, where she is. Her family lives in Danbury, Connecticut. I have no addresses or phone numbers. You know, when I was in the Army Reserves, I, I, I served with my best friend. Uh, he's, we were, he wanted to do more than 20 years, you know, get the whole yards, retire. But me, uh, I just wanted to do my six years and get out. What's your John point, Mosley Sam? would. Hmm? What's your point? Well, there were five of us in that supply room, okay? Uh, there were four college graduates and one high school graduate uh, who worked on an assembly line yeah. at General Motors. Your friend Mo Mosley? Yeah, uh, exactly. So anyway, a position opened up for Sergeant, and we all wanted it, but none of us were willing to extend beyond our six years. So make a long story short, Mosley gets the promotion. Did the promotion ruin your friendship? Well, no, I, uh, I was thrilled. I mean, if I couldn't get the promotion, uh, who next best but my best friend? It's a smart way to look at the situation, yes. Well, anyway, so uh, in uh, about a month later, Sergeant Mosley, I was standing with the troops, and he's got his new stripes on his arms there, and company commander calls him forward. 
And he goes, Sergeant Mosley? Mosley was scared to death. I could see his legs shaking right underneath his fatigues. Oh, oh, did he faint? Faint? I, at my public speaking class in college, a kid actually fainted. His eyes rolled back and he went down and everything. It scared the hell out of the professor. <laughs> no, 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 he didn't faint, but he, he was scared. He was nervous. Company commander said to him, Sergeant Mosley, I want you to pick a detail and go clean the supply room. So, <laughs> Mosley turns around. His voice started cracking when he tried to give the order. <laughs> so he calls my name. Well, and he, he called you? Well, of course, who else would he call but his best friend? <laughs> so anyway, he, he calls me up, and, and I look him straight in the eye. See, I'm trying to give him a little confidence. And he looks at me, and he says, <clears throat> uh, I want you to pick a detail and go clean the supply room. <laughs> so I uh, picked the usual guys and marched out of the auditorium with them. Wait, what's your point, Sam? It, well, you see, we... We rely on our friends to carry out our orders because well, they are our best friends. Uh, Catherine would not leave without telling someone where she went. Now, you don't know what the reason is, nor do I, but you do have enough sense not to do anything foolish until you find out what it is. You were my last hope, Sam. And I have been looking. Do you know anyone in personnel? Yeah, I have a good friend, Mel, Mel Collins. Will you ask him, who did she put down as an emergency contact in the event of an emergency? That person, whoever it is, they'll know where she is. And that's not considered confidential information. That's not a bad idea. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah, maybe you had something else on your mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Mel? Mel, this is Phil. Yeah, I've got a favor to ask. Uh, give me land, lots of land under starry skies above. Don't fence me in. Let me ride through the wide open country that I love. Don't fence me in. Let me be by myself in the evening breeze. I listen to the murmur of the cottonwood trees. Send me off forever, but I ask you please, don't fence me in. Just Sam, that was brilliant. She listed her cousin Barbara as her emergency contact. I just got off the phone with her. So? Catherine is in Portugal with her niece. Hmm. But Sam, Barbara doesn't know why she left. She thought it had something to do with me, and now we're all confused. But, but thank you. That uh, suggestion was a stroke of genius. Hey, oh, please. <laughs> Don't ever say the word stroke with a man over 60. <laughs> I'd much rather you say uh, uh, it was uh, uh, an inspired thought. Yeah, th that's much better. <laughs> it was an inspired thought. Well, inspiration is perspiration with a, a result. God, nobody at work even came close to that suggestion. Yeah. You live long enough, uh, you learn a few things. You know, for an owner of rental properties, you seem to know a great deal more than most people. Yeah, I have a degree in business administration. I, I was the third shift uh, transportation coordinator at Revlon, you know, the cosmetic company. Yeah. Of course, that was before they moved out of New Jersey. Wait, you have a degree in business administration? Yes, and I got that degree at a time when all business majors had to take courses in uh, Western civilization, philosophy, art, and music appreciation. <laughs> they don't do that anymore. Yeah, I know. I, I have a dual degree in accounting and computer science. <laughs> Catherine took all of those courses. I guess that's why I found her so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a smart woman, you know. That, that liberal arts education that everybody else thinks is so useless uh, uh, gave her a good head. Uh, she's not like those housewives of Beverly Hills, you know, with nothing but air between their ears. <laughs> that's why I like her. She's not afraid to disagree with me, especially when she thinks I'm wrong. And, and when she thinks I'm wrong, I begin to rethink my position. Well, you're a smart man. Smart men don't fear intelligent women. They marry them. <laughs> I'm trying to do. Her leaving makes that a little difficult. Mm. So, uh, so Revlon, um, is that where you met the security guard? 
the smartest man you ever met. Catherine told me all about him. Um, Catherine said you met him on a bench in the park? Yeah, we actually both worked the same shift at, at Revlon, but uh, he was outside in the guard shack and I was inside, so we never talked at work. But one day I saw him in the park over there walking his dog. So I went over and talked to him and we got to chatting. I found out he owned a boat and he liked to fish and I liked to fish. And one day he invited me on his boat and we became uh, close friends, <laughs> went fishing. Uh, for 20 years we fished for Fluke. Catherine said it was a yacht. Well, that came later. A security guard with a yacht? <laughs> the man was a financial genius. <laughs> uh, no, when he bought a stock, I bought a stock, and we both did very, very well. I guess I should have taken more of those liberal arts courses. Well, read the Harvard Classics. What? The Harvard Classics, uh, it, it's a shelf full of books, and it contains all the great ideas of Western civilization. You can pick up a used set for, for less than the price of a Stephen King novel. Harvard Classics. They can't hurt. Nope. <laughs> Sam, what am I supposed to do now that I know she's in Portugal? Even if I could get off work, which I doubt, I'm not sure that flying there is the best thing to do. I just feel well, like I'm no better off. Look, at, at, at least you know she isn't backpacking through Europe or, or traipsing around with that uh, old boyfriend of hers. What was his name? Uh, uh, Brian. <laughs> yeah, wow. You know more about us than the people who work with us. She told you about him? Yes, and Clarice. Catherine needed somebody to talk to, someone impartial mm. uh, and non-judgmental. <laughs> who better than a stranger on a park bench? <laughs> a stranger who sings Cole Porter, likes the three amigos, and knows all the names of the birds, trees, and butterflies. Yeah, and uh, can tell a young woman to ask a man for a cup of coffee. Don't forget about that, huh? Another moment of inspiration. <laughs> uh, did she ever tell you that we watched Evolution and the Three Amigos together? Mm -hmm. We laughed the entire night. It was a good night. Uh, well, there'd be plenty of more good nights. <laughs> Maybe. That may be definitely. I mean, she escaped to her nieces in Portugal. She might as well have gone to a convent. Yeah, I, I do feel better about that. Uh, you see, that's why you have to have faith in yourself. So, so what do you suggest? I can't call her, tweet her, or update her on Facebook. What do I do? Well, in Cosmo... <laughs> that, what? I mean, but when I'm in my uh, dentist's office... Uh, <laughs> Ten things every woman wants from a man. It's always the same ten things. And, and going to uh, zombie movies is definitely not one of them. <laughs> the Harvard Classics and Cosmo. Okay, okay, okay. What would Cosmo recommend? Romance. She's in Portugal. Well, uh, you have an address? No, but I guess I could get one. Yeah, write letters. Very romantic letters. Letters. In the age of instant communication, you want me to write letters? Yeah. Two, uh, three times a week if necessary. And if they come back unopened, if they don't come back unopened, then I want you to start sending flowers. Yeah. Letters and flowers. A million Cosmo readers can't be wrong. Now, you, you've got to woo her back. <coughs> woo her back? <laughs> what, you think I know the modern word for romance? <laughs> uh, you married 40 years, the old words work just as well. Now, you, you got to write her love letters. I don't think I've ever written a love letter to a woman. Hey, look, you can't tweet love, no. You, uh, now's a good time to learn to write letters. Write very romantic letters. Um, Sam, I've got to go. Thank you very much for talking to me, um, but I've got to get back to work. I, I just feel like I've known you for a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because of Catherine. Look, don't you worry about it. I, you two are going to be fine. I, I got a feeling about this. Everyone at work knows about you, Sam. I, now I'll have my own story to tell, but it's not yet complete. <laughs> uh, you and Catherine will get along just fine. Thanks, Sam. And, uh, I will write those letters. Okay, and don't forget the flowers. Huh? <laughs> I won't. <laughs> and dawn's a dreary day, your darling goes away. 
And all is over, you are sure. But oh, when she returns and loves you as before, you take her in your lonely arms and want her even more. Sa l'amour. It brings back the sound of tr Catherine! Sam! I, I didn't expect to see you here. Uh, not today. Uh, but first, uh, Cole Porter, I assume? Of course. <laughs> okay, what's a begin? A begin? Oh, it, it's a sexy dance. Uh, it's like a rumba, but very, very sexy. Well, I will have to look it up on YouTube when I get back to my office. <laughs> God, I really did not expect to see you here. Not in December. I, I thought you'd be in Florida. Oh, uh, no, we leave in a couple of weeks. I, it was such a beautiful day. I, I thought I'd come for a walk in the park. My wife is downtown doing some last-minute Christmas shopping. <laughs> Will you be seeing the grandchildren over the holidays? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, my daughter invited the whole family down. My sons and everyone will fly into Orlando. And, you know, I think I'm going to stay a little longer this time, and uh, I might look for a house. In Florida? Yeah, my sons say that it's, uh, it's cheaper and, and there are many more flights to Florida than there is to New Jersey. And, well, I tend to agree with them. And, I mean, it is warmer. I, I like golf. Uh, my, my wife wants to find a place that, that's large enough that we can entertain all our friends who want to come down and visit us. <laughs> and believe me, they'll come. <laughs> so this is the big move. Yeah. I think so. It's time. Uh, you know, the real estate market is pretty good now, and, and I'll probably have no problem at all getting rid of my houses. So when I come back, I'll, I'll put them on the market. So any plans on finding another park bench? Oh, no, 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 no. This, this is my park bench. You know, when, when, I, uh, when I left uh, the yacht, uh, I gave up fishing. I, you know, the captain, you know, he died. And, uh, well... Really, the truth is, it's not about fishing, it's about friendship, and when the captain died, uh, so did the friendship, so I never went back to fishing. I miss the captain much more than I miss the fishing. So, no plans on finding another park bench in Florida? Uh, Thoreau had one park bench, I mean one uh, Walden Pond, and one Concord Mass, and uh, when I leave New Jersey, I won't look for another bench. But you're looking well, Catherine. I'm feeling well rested. You might have heard that I've been gone for a while. Yeah, I did hear something to that effect, but I thought you were going to be gone longer. I couldn't stay away another three months. I missed Philip too much. Well, I know for a fact. He missed you. <laughs> he hasn't seen me yet. Oh, um, no? No, he, uh, he will, though, soon. He... He thinks he's meeting my cousin Barbara for lunch. She's supposed to deliver a message for him, but I decided to deliver it myself. Oh, is this uh, something he wants to hear? It is, Sam. Uh, he proposed to me in a letter. Uh, I normally don't like surprises, but I think I'm going to like this one. <laughs> I'm here to accept. I couldn't be happier for both of you. You two deserve one another. <laughs> yeah, aside from my cousin Barbara, you're the only one who knows. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I really did not expect to see you here today. Yeah, not in December, you know? I mean, I wouldn't have even have come out here today if it hadn't been such a lovely day. Yeah, well, winter's going to make a return tomorrow, according to the Weather Channel. Today was just pure luck. <laughs> 
You know, I flew in this morning, I returned to my apartment and aired it out. I listened to all those messages from Philip. I had no idea how upset he'd been. Uh, he missed you very much. But uh, look, you're here now, that's all that matters. <laughs> You know, I didn't want to wait in the lobby. There's too many people know me. I'd have to answer so many questions. and I didn't want to sit in my car on such a lovely day, so I came back here to the park. You know? Sam, this is where it all began, you know? And now I find you here. It's as if it's all come full circle. <laughs> Hakuna Matata. <laughs> Thank the Lord for a spring day in December. Huh? I mean, the truth is, though, I couldn't live without Philip. This hasn't been easy on either of us. Well, uh, who said that, that falling in love is easy? You know, you two. Look, I have a good feeling about... Wait, oh, hold it. It's my wife. Uh, God. Yeah. Hello? Yes. Yes. No, I'm fine. I, 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 I'm here in the park. And you'll never guess. Catherine is here. No, no, I'm serious. Yeah, well... It, it, it's a long story, honey. I, I, I'll tell you later, okay? All right. All right. Okay. Love you. Bye. <laughs> How did you know it was your wife, ESP? Uh, well, she's the only one that has this number. <laughs> if my leg starts to vibrate, <laughs> it must be my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you can still make me laugh, Sam. <laughs> You seem so relaxed in your relationship with your wife. Well, after so many years of marriage, you, you begin to get comfortable uh, after a while. You know, all the hard work is done. The hard work? It, well, sure. You know, we, uh, we raised and educated our children, and then we watched them get married and have children of their own. We're, we're uh, veterans of the child wars, whose only job now is to stand by and watch our children enter the trenches and, and do the same war. <laughs> it never ends, thank God. And, you know, I hope someday that you and Philip will enter that war. <laughs> You know, you're the only couple that I know that's been married for 40 years. Wow. You know, my, even my grandparents didn't make it that long. I mean, most people I know got divorced after 10 years. Well, you have, to, you have to work hard to make it work. It's so peaceful here. Thank you, Sam. For what? For not asking. <laughs> Everyone I know will ask, but you didn't. Okay. I, after what you've told me, it, it doesn't matter to me. You're here, you're happy, and, and, and Philip is happy, and that's all that matters. And damn those who demand explanations. I will tell Philip everything. Well, he's the only one who deserves to know. He, he stood by you. He never, never wavered. You're not curious at all? Curious? Of course, I'm curious, <laughs> but I, I have no right to pry. If you don't want to talk about it, don't talk about it. You're here now, and that's all that matters. Yeah, but, Sam, <laughs> you never doubted me either, and, and I think maybe that's why I want to tell you. Uh, look, you, you really don't have to do this, <laughs> really. Look, if it wasn't for you, I would have never met Philip. If it wasn't for you, Philip would have never written those letters. Uh, look, I, <laughs> he told you about the letters? Everything, Sam. All those things about having faith in those that we love. Oh, Sam, those letters were beautiful. I saved them all. I used to read them on the beach. Yeah, well, true eloquence comes from the heart, speaks words. But, I, you know, I never told him what to put in those letters. Uh, you know, I just, I just told him to write what he's feeling. Yeah, well, he took your advice. I want you to hear this. Are you sure you want to do this? You really don't have to. I know. My dearest Catherine, it's nighttime here. I'm sitting at my desk looking up at the stars. They're particularly beautiful tonight. I have the feeling that you are looking up at the same stars halfway around the world. I cannot explain it, but deep inside I know there is a link between us. It is love. I do not doubt the love I have for you, and I never want you to doubt it. Yet I could not feel such deep emotion if I did not have at the core of my being the belief that you love me. In the park the other day, Sam, yes I spoke with Sam. He showed me how two people could be walking next to each other and be emotionally miles apart and I, who am separated from you by an ocean, feel a precious closeness to you. In the presence of the stars tonight, I asked you to marry me. 
Orion is my messenger. When you see him in the sky, think of me and whisper to him your answer. I can wait in eternity to seal the bond with the ring. P.S. Whatever problem you believe has kept us apart, I accept so long as we can spend our lifetime together. Love, Philip. That is a very beautiful letter. <laughs> it is a beautiful letter. And that's why I'm here. <laughs> I, I wanted to read that to you. I didn't think I'd ever have the chance. I, you made it happen. Look, I had nothing to do with the content of that letter. <laughs> I just told him to write what he was feeling. You know, it was, it was the visit with his mother that made me leave. I, Philip said that that went very well. <laughs> it did, Sam, especially meeting his mother. <laughs> what happened? His whole family was so wonderful. Oh, God, and his mother. She was so incredibly happy for us. You know, Philip is her only child. No. She never remarried after her husband died. She told me about him when we were alone. He died from one of those um, IEDs, you know, those roadside bombs that kill so many. Philip was about six at the time. I don't even think he remembers his father. She showed me a photo of him in uniform. Oh, God, he was so young and handsome. She told me that she didn't think that Philip would ever be loved the way that he deserved to be loved. That is, until she met me. She said that she could see love in his eyes and in mine when we looked at each other, that it was the same way that she and her husband used to look at each other. <laughs> and it made her cry. She said her one wish in life was to see her son holding his son or daughter, because it would be kind of like having part of her husband back with her. And then she kissed me, and she apologized for letting her emotions get the best of her. And then when she took me, we rejoined the rest of the party, and we had such a very good time. It sounds like a very tender moment. <laughs> it was, but I find it difficult to say this. You, uh, you can't have children? When I was a young girl, I, um, I had female problems, you know, with my cycle. And um, the gynecologist put me on birth control, but he told me that I probably would have difficulty getting pregnant. He thought that I had a fertility problem. What a stupid thing to say to a young woman. I mean, did, did you have any tests taken? N no, but given my history. Did you go to another doctor? No, I mean, there was never a reason to, and I mean, I had almost completely forgotten about the conversation until I spoke with Philip's mother, and then all these memories came rushing back to me. I thought about Philip and his mother and our families. This is a damn doctor. I mean, of all the asinine things to say, I mean, they're supposed to, the first rule of medicine is do no harm. And what do they do? They do nothing but harm. They, they run all these tests, uh, uh, they cause stress, and, and then the government rewards them for their stupidity. I, Tim, are you okay? I no, not when I hear a story like that. Uh, look, here. I want you to call this guy, and you make an appointment with him. Uh, and, and, and promise me you'll make the appointment. You tell him that Sam from the old neighborhood told you to call. <laughs> One of the Jewish boys you went to school with? Yeah, I told you. I'd never have to worry about doctors or lawyers. But promise me you'll make an appointment with him. I will. Uh, Sam, I, I know I should have seen another doctor. I mean, I know that now. It's just... Sam, I was afraid. I am a grown woman, and I was afraid. I just couldn't bear the thought. Of Look, you're young, you're a healthy woman, and, and I'm sure there's no problem. And, and even if there is, you'd be amazed at what they can do today with medicine, and especially a specialist like him. Please, just promise me you'll make the appointment. I will, Sam. I will. I know I should have. I, I, I just, I didn't know what else to do. I'll tell Philip everything. No. He's the only one who deserves to know. <laughs> no. Sam, uh, it's almost one o'clock. Uh, can I ask you a favor? Sure, you can ask. Um, I think Philip and I will be getting married on Valentine's Day. Uh, would you and your wife come to our wedding? We would love it if you were there. Oh, we're, we're, 
we're probably still going to be in Florida. And, and look, it's your special day. I, you enjoy it with your husband. I, I tell you what, I will take my wife out to dinner on that night, and I'll tell her that we're celebrating your wedding. She'll like that. Okay. Um, can I ask one more favor? You can ask. Sing one chorus of Don't Fence Me In With Me? Ah, now that would be my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me land, lots of land under starry skies above. Don't fence me in. Let me ride through the wide open country that I love. Don't fence me in. Let me be by myself in the evening breeze. Listen to the murmur of the cottonwood trees. Send me off forever, but I ask you, please, don't fence me in. <laughs> thank you, Sam. Oh, thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, look, you have a long and happy life. For you and I have a guardian angel on high with nothing to do but to give to you and to give to me love forever true. Told you it wouldn't be here. It was a sunny day, I just thought. It's been a year. He mentioned he was moving to Florida. I bet you he made the move. Yeah, so much has happened in a year. I mean, that, our, your promotion, our moving to Princeton, my leaving the job to raise little Philip. So much has happened so quickly. Oh, I wish he would have been able to meet little Philip Samuel Duncan. <laughs> I'm sure your doctor told Sam from the old neighborhood all about little Philip. Mm, I don't know. Confidentiality. That only refers to discussing a medical problem. Birth is not a medical problem. He told you about Sam's Vietnam story. Can you imagine, on the flight home, a bullet shoots up through the bottom of the plane and blows off the front of his boot? God, it makes me shudder. <laughs> He said that's why Sam never took anything for granted. Every day was a joy to him. The bullet never touched a toe. <laughs> Experience like that could change a person's life. But then again, so good meeting a man like Sam. I just can't believe how it all happened. I mean, Dr. Schlemann performs one simple operation and five weeks later I'm pregnant. Disappointed we didn't get to spend more time together as a couple? No, never. You? Did you see the look on my mother's face when she held little Philip? Yes, it made me cry. <laughs> I still wish he would have come to the wedding, though. No. You said he didn't want anything to interfere with our day. You know what, I bet you he took his wife out to celebrate our marriage. It'll take us 40 years to figure out how this all happened. Your meeting Sam, my meeting Sam, the doctor, our son, all connected to one person. I guess it was too much to expect to see him here today. I mean, I didn't think so, but I hoped. Me too. I, I almost expect to hear him walking down the path singing another Cole Porter song. You're the top. You're the Coliseum. <laughs> You're the top. You're the Louvre Museum. You're a melody from a symphony by Strauss. You're a Shakespeare sonnet, a Bendel bonnet. He's, He's Mickey, Mickey Mouse. Mouse. <laughs> Every time I hear a Cole Porter song, I will think of Sam. What's a Bendel bonnet again? Uh, a hat and a Bendel hat box meant it came from a classy place. Mm. Well, I don't really know about jazz, but I am beginning to appreciate Cole Porter. Hmm. Did he ever say why he liked Cole Porter? Um, he said he liked his lyrics. Said that they were 
catchy and easy to sing. Good enough reason. Better than singing the Bee Gees. Stay alive, stay alive. <laughs> Sam sang that for me once. He said that it frightened him. Yeah, it's frightening me now. <laughs> Do you think we'll ever see him again? I hope so, but... If you meet someone like Sam once in your life, you're lucky. We were lucky. Do you remember the Samisms of his? Samisms? Yeah, okay, I'll start. Um, you can't tweet love. Ah, okay, yeah. all right, I've got one. Um, you want him to know you exist, but you don't want to make a little sacrifice, and you call yourself a woman. <laughs> you want eloquence? Speak from the heart. Young people talk as if they have all the answers. Too bad they didn't spend more time studying the questions. Mm. Oh, uh, all these people out there have opinions on how other people should live their lives. Does the President of the United States call them up and ask for their opinions? No. <laughs> if he doesn't bother li listening to them, why should you? There are no guarantees in life. But if you don't try to change the situation, things will never change. If two people love each other and are good for each other, that is what makes a marriage last. We were lucky to have known him. What do you think you would say if you were here today? Love that woman and that small child of yours. Remember what you went through to get them. Never lose faith in that man because he never lost faith in you. God, I am really going to miss him. Me too. What do you think he'd say about little Philip Samuel? The beautiful thing about babies is that they are newly arrived from God. But physically, they're a mess. <laughs> All a child needs is love. Make sure you give them a lot of love. It'll help them grow strong. I guess they'll never really leave us. I hope not. Do you mind if we just sit here for a little while? We can sit here as long as you'd like. <laughs>